Hi there, good morning, happy Wednesday. Thanks for tuning in again so that we can just spend a few minutes here together in the middle of another week. My name is John Tracy, and my hope is that I'll be able to encourage you this morning. In fact, that's what we call these little Wednesday videos, midweek, morning, encouragement. And I wanna think with you a little bit about your personal morning routine. In other words, when your alarm clock goes off in the morning and you open your eyes to let in the light of another day, here's the question I have for you. What do you do next? What do you do first in your day? And you know what's interesting, as I've talked with a lot of people who struggle in a whole bunch of different ways, maybe with fear or anxiety, lust, self-identity, uh, discouragement with relationships, you know, among a lot of other things, you know, one of the things I've observed among those who are struggling in these ways is how uh, attached they often are, even to the point of addiction, to their phones, uh, to social media accounts, uh, really just technology in general. And so when I ask you, what do you do first when your eyes open in the morning? You know, for a lot of people, their answer would be, uh, well, I check Facebook, of course. Uh, I take a look at Instagram or my email or the news app on my phone. I, I check my stocks app or my bank account or, you know, I, I, I quick check to see if I missed any messages or texts overnight. But basically, the first thing I do in the morning every day is I check my phone. And so if that's you, then I just want to chat with you a little bit about that and maybe challenge you to think and consider, why do you think that is? Why is it that you go to your phone or your tablet first? What do you think is feeding that desire? And might there be a connection between that and maybe some of the things that you're struggling with in your heart and in your life? Recently, I came across an article by one author who listed some reasons why he thinks he tends to reach for his phone first in the morning. For example, he said, you know, I find myself regularly waking up with three hungers. I'm starving for novelty, ego, and entertainment. And then additionally, he said, I always wake up trying to avoid three things like the plague. Those three things would be boredom, responsibility, and hardship. And man, I can really relate with how he describes that. Those are some serious battles for the true affections of our hearts. And I think to some extent, we all face those demons every morning. I think he's right that those can often be the very things that keep us lying in bed surfing our social media accounts, or at least, you know, that those are the things that cause us to reach for the phone first thing when our feet hit the floor. So maybe, you know, you're kind of listening to me talk and you're thinking, okay, I kind of get that, but like, you know, is there really anything wrong with that? I mean, what's the big deal really? I think it is a big deal. Because as I already mentioned, that kind of dependency on a, on a virtual world to satisfy the hunger of our hearts for novelty, ego, and entertainment, and to avoid things like boredom, responsibility, and hardship, you know, that can create some very serious issues that show up in a whole lot of other ways. Let's think about that. You know, for example, you know, what if you are successful in the morning to be the very first one to discover and report on uh, some latest piece of news to others? I mean, that's, that's part of why we, we tend to check the news so quickly. We want to be the one with the news of the day. The one, you know, who is important, who can share with others something that they don't know about yet. You know, but what if the news of the morning is actually horrible news that confronts you first thing? That's all, ha that's for sure happened to all of us, I'm sure. Or, or what if your search for some ego satisfying candy to, you know, a few more likes or shares or comments to feed your need to feel valued and appreciated and loved. I mean, what, what if in, instead you find this morning it's some ego deflating acid when you know, actually people didn't praise you and didn't click like or comment to tell you how beautiful and special you are on social media. What then? You know, what's gonna happen in your heart then? What if you wake up to find out that instead of, you know, getting some comments that inflate your ego in response to your selfie pic, actually somebody said something unkind or hateful to you or about you last night? What if the first five minutes of your day, you know, you're getting yourself happily entertained by some YouTube video that someone else shared so that you can avoid facing the pressures and responsibilities of your own reality, but at the end of those five minutes, you've actually been drugged down into like a silly, demeaning, small-minded, hollow, immature frame of mind that has left you entirely unprepared to deal with the actual real life stuff that is before you in your day. Again, I'm just asking you the question, you know, was it worth it, the time that you spent? What if you mindlessly, you know, scroll through your Facebook feed, reading what everybody else says about politics and social issues and the latest annoyances that they feel motivated to gripe about and air to the public, and you do that to, the, uh, to avoid boredom and responsibility and hardship of your own day to kind of distract you, only to find that after that little binge, you're left spiritually and morally and emotionally less stable and less able to cope with the reality that is before you. Again, the question, 
was it worth it? And my point is, I think there's a much better way to start our day than on our phones. Instead of, you know, first opening Facebook, how about first opening God's book? That was pretty clever, right? You like that? God's book instead of Facebook? I mean, but you and I both know that cute little sayings like that, that's not gonna be enough to get it done, right? That's not gonna be the thing that drives us out of bed and into the Bible every morning and in the midst of our daily grind. No, if it's gonna happen, it's gonna require us to make some very intentional, disciplined decisions and plan some things out or it's just never gonna take place. We'll just keep getting sucked into the vortex of technology every morning and it will continue to be one of the loudest voices that is influencing and shaping our thoughts and our desires and the emotions of our hearts on a daily basis. Just some last ditch minute effort to start our day in the word will, will not be successful on an ongoing basis. We have to decide in advance to build it into our routine. And so it's critical that we do that because every single morning what we need is to be refreshed and filled and strengthened with the influence of the Holy Spirit from the very moment that our day begins. We need to be stirred with fresh zeal to live for the glory of Christ and every single thing that we're, we do and that we're gonna face in the upcoming day. We need to be equipped with joyful courage to face the pressures and hardships and resolve conflicts, uh, to consider others better than ourselves and you know, to love and sacrifice and deny ourselves and pursue true greatness as servant-hearted leaders. That's what we need in the morning. That's our, our real need to have our thoughts and our hearts redirected to the right place. And so our morning routine and agenda must be structured in such a way that those are the things that end up being the fruit of those daily disciplines. Because I don't know about you, but I mean, there are just a whole lot of mornings, frankly, I wake up and I just don't feel like starting my day with God. Often I, I don't wake up feeling strengthened to do all of the glorious things that Jesus Christ calls and equips me to do. So I need my thoughts and my heart to be realigned every single morning. And a key verse that reinforces this for us is Psalm chapter five, verse three, that says, "'Oh Lord, in the morning you hear my voice. "'In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you "'and watch,' the psalmist says." He's like, how about this? How about if we just let the very first thing out of our mouths in the morning while our heads are still on the pillow be a cry to God? You know, Good morning, God. I love you, Lord. I need your help today, Father. I'm in desperate need of your spirit's influence. Talk to him first thing in the morning. That's what the psalmist said. Oh, Lord, in the morning, you hear my voice. And then he goes on to say this. I, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. I think that a practical application of that sacrifice would simply be me offering my body and my day and my devotion, my attention to God first thing every morning. And as I offer myself as a living sacrifice in the morning, the psalmist said there, I'm watching. Watching for what? What am I watching for in the morning? Well, Psalm 143, eight puts it like this. Let me hear in the morning of your steadfast love for in you I trust. Make me know the way I should go for to you I lift up my soul. So I'm watching and looking for the steadfast love of God. That's what I'm looking for. I'm searching for it. I'm on the lookout for it in his word. And then Psalm 90, 14, satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, O God. So don't just look for it, but when you find it, because you will, ask the Lord, satisfy me in the morning with your steadfast love. And why? He goes on to say this, that we may rejoice and be glad in you, God, and your love all of our days. So we're starting our day with an intentional treasure hunt in God's inspired word for reminders of his steadfast love and wisdom for our lives with full expectation that he will most definitely provide it. And in doing so, there will be a profound sense of satisfaction for our souls. We're searching for that with expectation every single morning, going to the word expecting him to remind us that he is the beautiful one to be desired, not us. He cares for us in ways that nobody on social media ever can or ever will. He's the one most worthy of our devotion and attention and affection. Psalm 119, 148, my eyes are awake before the watches of the night that I may meditate on your promise. Psalm 139, 17, how precious to me are your thoughts, O God. And verse 18, I awake and I am still with you. So I would suggest that before you and I go to bed tonight, we would make some intentional choices and plans to get up tomorrow and free ourselves of the candy addictions and habits of avoidance that have been ruining our potential for spirit-enabled strength at the beginning of the day. 
and instead feast on the scriptures that will never fail to satisfy. And I hope that this little video is actually one of those soul strengthening moments that has better equipped you to rely on the riches of grace that we find in Jesus Christ today as you lean hard on him and on his word. Know this, you are loved. And so I'm praying Ephesians 3.16 for you this morning, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Thanks for sharing these few moments with me. I look forward to seeing you again next Wednesday for Midweek 